I'm going to be doing a book review video. I have eight books, and if you hear my voice is a little bit weird, it's because I am getting over a cold again, so my nose is still a little bit stuffed up, and there's mucus in my throat, everything else, it's TMI, but let's just get right into it. So this book, all these books I got at flea markets or thrift stores, I mean not thrift stores, or flea markets, book sales, stuff like that. So this one is the first one I'm going to show you, it's called Grimm's Fairy Tales, and this is what it looks like, and basically it's just a cute little hardback book full of little fairy tales that Grimm, the brothers Grimm, wrote, and some of them were really weird, and some of them were ones that like, um, the, the, um, Snow White was in there, Rumpelstiltskin was in there, I forget, I think there was one more in there that, like, was like a Disney movie, and they were, I mean, most of them, the, the ones that were from Disney were really different from the ones that, um, well, the Disney portrayal ones, I'll say, but it was a cool, creepy kind of fairy tale book. I mean, it wasn't like fairy tales like we've grown up with, obviously, but it was a really weird kind of book. I mean, if you're really into, like, <clears throat> I've always wanted to read grim fairy tales, so if you really, like, like that or you're, like, creepy kind of little short stories, that one's for you. So, this one I'm excited to show you because... I, for Christmas, I got the Outlander, um, on, um, DVD, the Outlander, um, original Star Series, and I finished up the series, and at a book sale, I found this book because I got this book, I mean, I got the series of Christmas, and I just started, I watched them all last week because... Um, we need batteries for the remote, for the Blu-ray player or whatever, so it took us that long to get batteries. So, this is the Outlander. This is the first book in the series. It's Outlander. There's eight books in the series. It's by Diane Gob Galbden. I don't know how you say her last name. And this is what it looks like. Now, I started reading this book while I watched the Outlander season one on um, DVD, and most of the stuff that's in this book um, is in the DVD set, so if you either want to read this book and you watch the show, or you read the book and you want to watch the show, um, they some of it is, most 99% of it is the same as the book, so you guys know. And it was a good book. I, there's 850 chapters in, I mean, 850 pages in this book. And there's 41 chapters. And some of the chapters are really, really long. Some are, like, kind of short. But I could not put this book down. And I don't know if it's because I was watching the, the show as I was reading this. I don't know. But it was a really good book. It was really good. This is what it looks like. Um... And I couldn't put it down. Like, I, like every day, I wanted to read this book, like, 20 over 7. Like, as soon as I woke up to the moment I went um, to sleep, I could not put this book down. So, this one is... Now, I read these books in different order. And this the first, the first one is called The Manning Sisters. The second one is called The Manning Brides, which I read. And then the, f the one that I read first was The Manning Grooms, and I read The Manning Grooms like four or five book review videos ago, so if you want to look it up, you can. Um, I do always put the book, the book titles in the description box. And so this one is the second one in the series. And this is by Debbie May Comber. It's called The Manning Bride. This is what it looks like. And basically what it's about, it's about these, this family, the Mannings, who, um, these books all have two in one. There's, like, two stories in one book. And the first one was about, um, the Manning guys. And this one was about, um, the first one was called Marriage of, um, Inconvenience. And it was this... Um, oh no, no, it was about, okay, 
I'm, from being sick, I had to read like the back of the book because I, being sick, you know, it can torture your brain a little bit. But um, the first book was about um, Rich Manning, and he was the best friend to this woman named Jamie. And Jamie just broke up with her boyfriend or her husband or fiance or something. And she wants to have a baby and she wanted to do adoption. But then people, you know, say like, y'all, you, the agency's like when you're a couple and not just a single person adopting baby. So she decides that she wants to do artificial insemination. And she wants to have Rich's baby because she didn't want to have a stranger's sperm slash baby. So he agrees, but on one condition is they have to be married, and then once the baby comes, they could get divorced because he wanted the baby to have his name and stuff. And then the second book was called Stand In Wife, and it was about Paul Manning. His wife had uh, only one kidney, and when she got pregnant her second time around, she got toxemia, and she died from that. So her sister, Leah, Paul's sister-in-law, Leah, decides to come in and help take care of the kids until the kids got older and stuff. And they start to have feelings for one another. And Leah wants to make sure that he's not, Paul's not pretending that he, sh Leah is his, his um, dead wife and stuff like that. So, it was a really good book. I really liked it. And it does, it does, um, like, because I read the third book in the series first. It does just tell you, like, oh, like, the couples that got married. It doesn't tell you, like, what happened to each one of these couples. It just says, oh, these people got married. So, you know who got married in the previous books. But it doesn't tell you how they got married and stuff. If that makes any sense. So, this one is Cat Stories. It's by James Herrett. Harry Ott, something like that, and it was illustrated by Leslie Holmes, and this was a cute little book. Now, this isn't, like, because you probably think, oh, it's illustrated, it's probably, like, for little kids, but it's not, it's, this book could be for, like, anybody, it could be for little kids, it could be for teens, it could be for adults, and basically what this is, it's basically what it says it's about, it's about this guy, James Harriet, or Harry Ott, however you want to say his last name, I butcher people's last names all the time, it's about him being a vet. Yeah, him being a vet. And it's his tale. So it takes place um, in this small little community village where he's the only vet. And he tells um, his patients cat stories. So it's really cute. And then it's not like every page there's like an illustration. But there's like these cute little illustrations about the cats to give you more of like a description of what the cat looks like. And most of these stories are cute. I don't think there was, a, like, there wasn't any, like, sad stories in it. They were mostly all happy. And the cats were cute, too. So that's what it looks like. And I'm, like, I'm not, like, I am not, like, a cat person. Like, I mean, I like cats and I like dogs. But I would rather have a dog as a pet than a cat. But cats are so cute, too. So I like them both equal. I just wouldn't want to have a cat as a pet. If that makes any sense. But I do love cats. And this book is really cute. So you could read read those to your kids. Or to, you know, like... I could see anybody reading that book. So this one, now, despite her last name, she is not related to Winston Churchill. This is Jill Churchill. And this is called War and Peas. P-E-A-S. It's by it's a Jane Jeffrey mystery, and I have a ton of these books. And this is what it looks like. It's basically about this woman named Jane who solves mysteries. And this one is about this P museum thing they have there about um it's it's there it's this community's um, annual P festival, and they're doing this like civil war reenactment battle, and somebody ends up dying during it. And through this book, with her working at this P museum, she discovers um, like this P plant that didn't get created and was supposed to make these peas really good. Because this guy who um, was the pea king, that's why they have this pea museum, 
was by August Casper Sh Schellen. And he made this, he was supposed to have, uh, supposedly have made this pea plant that was supposed to help with the abundance, make more peas on a plant because of the Great Depression and Dust Bowl were going on. And it turns out that the person that kill, got killed was supposed to really have known about this pea formula plant thing. And this is what it looks like. This book is an Agatha Christie book, and this is a James, a Jane Marple m murder mystery. And it's a pocket full of rye, and this is what it looks like. And basically, it's about this wealthy man dies, and um, it takes place with that um, the nursery rhyme poem with a pocket full of rye. If you ever heard that poem or that nursery rhyme, and the nursery rhyme is is a clue because all these things are happening like these birds were baked in a pie and when this wealthy man dies there's a pocket full of rye in his coat pocket and stuff like that and Miss Marple's working with this detective and the detective says that this poem has nothing to do with the mystery and she's trying to convince him that it is and it was a really good book. I really liked it, and I read a couple different ones, and I'm still on the fence with Agatha Christie. I mean, some of her books were good. One was, like, really outrageous to me. Um, this one is Philip, by Philippa Gregory, and Philippa Gregory makes um, books about the royals. They're, like, historical fiction, but they're mostly about the Henry VIII, wives or Amble like Anne Boleyn and wives and his kids and stuff and this is called The Constant Princess it's by Philippa Gregory now this book was really long there was no chapter marking so I don't know how many chapters were in it but it was a really long book and um this this book was about Catherine of Argonon and it was basically more about in the first half of the book was basically about how she was married to Henry the eighth's brother Arthur Henry, or King Arthur, well, Prince Arthur, Prince of Wales. And then it gets into, um, when he dies, it gets into her marriage with Henry VIII. And it basically was about how she was destined to be the Queen of England. And that's basically what she says. She says, you know, that's my destiny. I will, from the day I was born, I was supposed to be Queen of England, Princess of Wales and stuff. And it basically goes like that. It's basically like the first, it says it's in parts. The first part is about her being, um, what was her name? They didn't call her Catherine yet until she became the Princess of Wales or the Queen. No, she, she became the, when she changed her name to Catherine was when she was the Queen of England. Her name was, but before that, her real name was Cat Catalina or something like that. She was the daughter of Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand of Spain, and this is what it looks like. It was a really long book. It takes place with her being, oh, like, she was the princess of Spain or something, and then the second part was about her being, um, the princess of Wales, because she married the prince of Wales at the time that was, um, Henry VIII's brother, and then he died, and then she was called the constant princess. That's where the constant princess title comes from. And then the last part was obviously when she was Queen of England. It was a really good book. Like I said, it was historical fiction. Um, her books are always like that. Like, they take place, they say, like, her chapters are usually, like, winter, like, 1492 to 1493 or something like that. Um, they're real, they're really good books. Now, this book, these books are the series called Secrets of the Blue Hill Library. This one's number nine in the series. It's called If Walls Could Talk. It's by Emily Thomas. And I always read the, I don't read these books, like, when I get them, I just read them. I don't read them, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. And this is what it looks like. And what this book is about is about this woman. Her house is this old Victorian house. That's converted the first the first excuse me floor of the house is a library, and then on top is where her and her two kids live. She's a widower that inherited her aunt Edie's house. Now she's the librarian of it. And after a heavy rain, um, in her her basement gets flooded, or a pipe breaks or something, and Annie discovers this the skeleton remains of this person. 
And throughout the book, she's trying to figure out who this person was because obviously they don't know who it was and what or who or what or what it was who lived who before the uh, before Aunt Edie's house was built, who actually lived there, what was actually there before this house, stuff like that, and her kids get involved in it too, and it's just a nice, these books are like a nice, cute little story, I mean, anybody can read these books too, and I really love how, I really like, um, all, like, all the books are different colors, like, this one's like a red or maroon color, the one before this I read, it was like a blue color, and I like the lace on these, like, the doily lace that goes onto the back too, these are really good books, I really like them. And that's all I have for this video. Sorry if it was a little bit rushed, but um, I just wanted to make sure that this video didn't run really, really long. So I'll see you guys next time with another video, and I hope, hope you guys have a wonderful day, and please subscribe.